Google Sheets has a new Tables feature that allows you to take normal spreadsheet data and format it beautifully like in this table here. Let's back up and find out how to create this. When you have data already in a Google Sheet, you can turn it into a table by selecting the data, going to Format, and Convert to Table. Alternatively, you can create a new table from scratch by typing at in a cell and choosing components, tables. You can also get to this through the insert tables tool. This will open up a sidebar on the right where you can hold your mouse over these various suggested table types. And when you find one you like, you can click on insert to add that table in a new sheet and then you can go ahead and fill it in with your data. One of the first things you can do once you have a table and some data in it is change the column type. So in this case, many of these are simply text fields, but for the time column, I can actually tell my spreadsheet what it is, that it's time, by clicking the drop down next to the header name, choosing edit column type, and then selecting, in this case, I would choose date and the time option. And then I'll see a little icon that shows me this is a specific type of data in this column. So if I add a row and I try to add something else, it will give me a little error saying it doesn't match the type. Other patterns I see in this table, uh, for example, class level, I see two different values here. And in day, I see two different values. These would both be really appropriate as drop downs. So when I want to add new data, it's super easy to select from the drop down. So to do that, I'll click the drop down next to the class level, edit column type, and this time I'll choose drop down. And this is going to open up the data validation sidebar, and this is basically what I use to create the drop down. And I can add my values here. You can even color code them if it's appropriate. Not going to for this. I can add other things or remove options from here as I need to. And when I click done, I'll see my column type drop down with a little drop down signal. I'm going to do the same thing for day. Edit column type, drop down, Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, perfect, done. Give a little more space to that day column. The duration I can set to a general number format. And like I said, when you set the specific rule for the type of column, the good thing about that is that when you go to add more information, if you put drop downs, for example, it's really easy to add in the rest of the information because it's got the format set for you. So some of the other things you can do to customize this would be to name the table. So up near the top left of the table, I can click the drop down here and I'll see several options. I can rename the table, so I can call this courses. Just note that you can't have spaces. It has to be just letters and numbers and start with a letter. So in this one, I'm just going to go ahead and say courses. Other options I can do here, I can customize the colors of the table. So instead of that default green, I can choose something else or even a custom color. I can turn off alternating colors so the background is just plain white. Turn it back on. And finally, if I want to unformat it, I would choose revert to unformatted data. So if I click that, you go back to where I started. I'm gonna click on undo and I'll show you that if I say delete table, it actually deletes everything, the formatting and my data. So be careful with those options. All right, now one of the really powerful features that comes into play with tables is the way you can group them. That's going to be the views button near the right of the title. So when I click on that, I can do a group view and this is gonna organize my table by everything that has the same course number or the same day. So if I choose room number, I'm going to see all the courses that are in room 101 first, then room 103, 105, and this is a nice way for me to visually see which rooms are maybe under scheduled and I could schedule more in them. This is similar to how a pivot table might organize the data. I can choose other options here if I want to choose the day and I have another view, all the Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, all the Tuesday, Thursdays. And as I click back in the views, you can see that it's creating temporary groups that link right back to this. So if I want to go back to my room number one, I can click on views and I can go back to my temporary room number. Now let's say this is a view that is going to be used by other people. I can actually in the top right when I'm viewing it, click on save view 
and I'm going to keep the same title group by room number and click on save. And once I've done that, the cool thing about these is once I save a view, under view options, I can actually get a link to this view. So if I want to share with someone else this grouped by room number view, I go to view options, get the link, and when I paste it in or send it in an email or whatever the case might be, it's going to take someone directly to this view, group by room number. The other tool I can use through views is filter view. This is a tool that exists in regular sheets as well. And when I do the filter view, it's going to remove any of my grouping, but I'm going to get little filter icons on all of my columns. So if I only want to see graduate classes, I can come to the class level column, click the filter icon, and I can uncheck blanks and undergraduate and click OK. And now my view is filtered to only show that. Similar to the group by views, if this is a view I would want to save and get back to again, I can click save view for this option. I'm going to call this graduate courses, click save, and then under the views tool and view options, I can get a link to this view as well to then share with someone. And when they go to it, it'll bring them right to the filtered grad view. Okay, I'm going to click the X near the top right to close all of my filtered and group views and be in my regular table. And the last thing that's really helpful with tables is using them in formulas. So let's say that I want to make a formula that sums up all these durations. I could just do sum, open parentheses, and select column F. And that is pretty easy, but let's say I'm pretty far away from this and I don't remember the column or what the, what's the case. I can actually refer to the table and sum it up from there. So what I'm going to do is sum, and instead of selecting column F, I'm going to start typing the name of my table, which is courses, and then it's going to pull up a list of all the things I can refer to in this table. In this case, I want the duration column. So I'm going to select courses and duration and then when I hit end parentheses and enter it's going to sum that up for me. And this formula is really easy to understand because it's referring to the table courses duration. So I can easily see this is the sum of the duration in that table. So as another example, what if I want to sum up the duration of graduate and undergraduate courses? Now a pivot table would be a really great way to do this, but if we wanted to do it with a formula here, what I can do is I can type down graduate and undergraduate. So I have those two options. Now I can use a sum if formula. So the range here, it's telling me this is where I'm going to test a rule or a criterion. And what I want to do is look at the class level column and make sure it equals the value here. So for a range, I want to refer to my class level column. And the criterion I want to set is that it equals this. And then the sum range where I want to sum up is the duration column. So I'll start typing courses, choose duration, and I will hit enter. I get the sum of all the classes that are graduate. Now because I referred to the word graduate here, if I pull this down, it's actually going to add it up for undergraduate as well. So tables make formulas easier to create and easier to read because when I look at this, I can see that I'm looking at the class level value to make sure it matches graduate and I'm summing up duration. So take a look at this powerful new tool and as a bonus if you've got pivot tables in Excel and you bring them into Google Sheets those are all going to work much more smoothly now that the tables feature is supported in both tools.